Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about how to get your ryegrass to transition out in the spring so that your Bermuda grass can come back in healthy. I'm Tanner with Main Street Mowing and this is Ryegrass 101. Step one, ryegrass, we wanna make sure we get the most out of our ryegrass. You put it down for a reason and in the spring, ryegrass is king. So the, what you can do to make sure your ryegrass is just popping, you're gonna put down that nitrogen, the 2100, you're gonna put it down like every 10 to 15 days, but put it down at half rate, half rate of whatever the bag says you're supposed to put, you know, so many pounds per thousand square feet, read that put it out at half rate and it's going to be just popping and awesome. And then we're going to go to step two and we're going to teach you how to transition out of rye and into your Bermuda lawn. Step number two is you're going to start lowering the height of cut of your lawnmower. So what that does is removes the shade. Basically your ryegrass is all up here growing and popping and nice and healthy and your Bermuda grass is way under here and it's trying to find some sunlight. So what you're going to have to do is keep cutting your, your ryegrass a little shorter and shorter so that your Bermuda grass can see the light of day. And that's going to help your Bermuda grass to transition and it's also going to uh, fade out your ryegrass at the same time. So it'll stay green and you won't have this thing where it goes dead and then your Bermuda is struggling to get through to see the, day, the light of day and it's gonna look like you have a dead lawn for a while. So lower that high to cut and the Bermuda will naturally transition in and that 2100 that you're putting down, keep doing that because that's gonna feed and uh, get your, uh, your Bermuda grass, that's what it needs as well. So it's the, it's the, it's the ideal situation Take that height of cut down and let your Bermuda transition in. Okay, here's a bonus tip for you. If you got zoysia grass, you know, so you're putting perennial ryegrass over your zoysia grass, you're gonna treat it a little differently. Bermuda can handle all that nitrogen and stuff, but your, your zoysia is a little bit more finicky. So instead of putting out that 2100 high nitrogen every 10 to 15 days, you're gonna do something totally different. What, what I want you to do is between uh, March and June, you're just gonna put out two applications, but instead of nitrogen, high nitrogen, you're just gonna put out a starter fertilizer two applications of starter fertilizer between March and June, and you're still gonna do that same thing about you know gradually uh, lowering the height of cut to scalping bag and get that uh, transition time for your zoysia to come out. Zoysia comes out a lot earlier than Bermuda most of the time, so it'll green up. So you gotta pay attention to that. And, um, and But you know you can have uh, an overseeded zoysia lawn with perennial rye. Now, I would say stay away from overseeding any lawn if you got a lot of shade. It's going to be uh, really hard to transition out. Obviously, if you have a lot of shade, you're probably not, uh, you probably don't have a lot of Bermuda under there anyway. So if you, if you wanna just not do that, you're gonna, you're gonna damage and further uh, you know, cause problems for your Bermuda grass if you have any shade at all. And zoysia grass in the shade, um, you know, obviously zoysia is gonna be more, more thick and full in the shade, so if you have shade, I recommend going to a zoysia grass instead of Bermuda grass. There's fine bladed zoysia grasses out there like Xeon zoysia, which is my favorite, and it kind of resembles a perennial rye. So anyways, you guys look into that, and that's about all we have today. Uh, make sure you check us out at MainStreetMowing.com for more tips and tricks like this. Y'all have a great day.